So for our last lesson in this class, I'm going to try to help you guys make a connection between ANOVA, regression, and ANCOVA, because they are all related. And so we're going to start with talking about the regression formulation in terms of the peanut yield example. Before I do that, remember in lesson 13, somewhere in lesson 13, we started talking about dummy variables or grouping variables. And that idea is going to come back into play. Okay. And so to understand the adjustments made in ANCOVA, we can formulate the analysis in terms of multiple linear regression using those dummy variables or those group variables that we talked about in lesson 13. So in the multiple linear regression formulation, the response in the multiple linear regression is the same as the response in ANCOVA. What I mean by that is the Y in our formula is the same. The covariate is the first predictor in the multiple linear regression model. So that's the beta one X I J. And then our treatment factors with T levels um, is going to be represented with T minus one group variables or dummy variables as the next T minus one predictors in the multiple linear regression. Okay. So to understand this a little bit more, let's go back to our peanut yield example. Again, this is where we're trying to understand the effect of three fertilizers on the yield of individual plants. We have 30 plants and we have our covariate of the starting height of the plant. And we're interested again in seeing if there's a difference in the fertilizers. So since we have three treatments, we're gonna need two group or dummy variables to represent our treatments. We're going to let S, let SIJ and FIJ represent whether we're in a specific fertilizer group. So S and F here. With this formula, we're setting C as our reference group. And so everything is going to refer back to our fertilizer C. Hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense as we keep going through these notes. So a little intuition on why we only need two predictors for three levels is because with everything zeroed out, so this case, we know, we know it's not an S and we know it's not an F, zeroed out puts us in C. So we only need two variables to represent three. Our grouping variables um, in our regression model, we're gonna have our covariate, beta one, and then we have our two dummy variables right here or again, S and F are either gonna take a zero or a one. And these two variables are gonna to relate to the type of treatment that is being received. This is equivalent to doing um, separate regression models for three fertilizers with dinner, different intercepts, but the same slope. And again, we briefly covered this in lesson 13. And so what I mean by that is if we look at these models here, if, S and F both equal zero, these get canceled out and we're left with a beta naught, beta one, and then our epsilon. If S one is, if S is one, then this beta two term is gonna join our beta one, beta zero, and our beta three is gonna cancel out because we'd assume that's at zero. And then vice versa, if F is one, this beta three is gonna join our intercept. And so when I was saying that C was a reference group, we can notice that our beta two and beta three are either gonna be added or, or subtracted. It depends on the sign um, of our beta two and beta three. So these two variables are kind of, it's being referenced back. This is kind of our baseline in a sense. So if we were to perform a regression analysis, so plugging this into our jump, we would get back an estimate table that would look something like this. What this is telling us is that we are now gonna get our least squares estimates for our beta hat, beta hat zero, beta hat one, beta hat two, beta hat three. And then we are going to plug those in to our model that we had. And so we could get three separate regression analysis or fits for each fertilizer by taking these variables these estimated variables and plugging it into the model. Remember when we go from the population model to the fitted, our epsilon ijs get canceled out. Not canceled out, 
they're removed because they're not part of the fitted model. Okay. Now, if I told y'all the mean of the height is 49.9, this is going to help us get to our adjusted treatment means. And so what happens is, is we're going to take our overall height and we're going to plug it into our fitted models. And we're now going to get our adjusted treatment means. And so that's why our adjusted treatment means are going to be different than just taking the average of fertilizer C or fertilizer F or fertilizer S. We're trying to adjust for that starting plant height. Okay. Um, there are some additional things that we can talk about. So you can test on the covariate effect. Um, testing is the same. You want to see if beta 1 is 0 or not. You would still want to use the type 3 um, test statistic and ANCOVA. This is similar to the idea of the individual tests on the partial slopes. Typically, though, this is less of an interest, and we're more interested in how the treatments differ. Um, there are extensions of ANCOVA where you can use different slopes as well. So if we go back to our um, picture, maybe we expect that the slopes of the fertilizer to be different. We can incorporate that by now treating beta I, J, so it changes for the um, treatments. This would be equivalent to incorporating a treatment covariant interaction, and you would be interested if the slope is the slopes of these treatments are equal or not. Okay, so to wrap up quickly um, this lesson, I'm going to go over to jump and show you how the analyses are the same but under different parameterizations. So to fully demonstrate and hopefully convince you guys that an ANCOVA setup that we talked about in the first couple of lessons is the exact same as our regression setup that we talked about in this lesson, I'm gonna perform both analyses and show you guys that we'll get the same parameter estimates and overall ANOVA table. So how I'm gonna break it up is we're gonna first set up our analysis using the ANCOVA. So what I'll be using is these three columns. So we're gonna analyze that model, yield, our height and our fertilizer. We're gonna add that and run. And so I'll go through that slowly for our videos. This is the plot that we got at the end of lesson 18C. But if we scroll down, we have our ANOVA table, our parameter estimates, and our effect. But really, this isn't beneficial until we bring up our other analyses. So we'll leave this on this side. So now I'm going to use the regression um, parameterization, which is going to be utilizing these four. So I'm going to go to Analyze, Fit Model, um, boop, Add, Run. Now I'm going to this over here. Okay. All right. Now, if I scroll down, we get our ANOVA or analysis of variance table. If we look at the overall F ratio, which we rarely kind of look at, we see a 4447 and we see a 4447. Okay, so we know our overall analysis of a variance table matches, which is good. We can also see our parameter estimates for the ANCOVA setup also match with our regression setup over here on the right. Then our effects test for height matches. So we have a 416 for our F and a 416. Now, the slight difference is that fertilizer here is in one row, but then in our regression setup, it's broken up into two. So there's a slight difference, but not too much. But hopefully you guys see that overall, these two setups produce the same results and parameter estimates and all that. 